After my divorce with my husband was settled, I started living with my daughter, Natalie. But about six months later, an incident occurred. It was my day off, and I was relaxing at home with Natalie when I received a phone call from my mother. To my surprise, my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law suddenly came to my parents' house and entered without any permission. I got ready quickly and headed over to my parents' house. When I arrived at my parents' house, my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law were sitting on the living room sofa waiting for me. I had no idea why they had come so suddenly. Why did you both suddenly show up at my parents' house? I asked, and my ex-husband John said something which surprised me. I want you to give me back the money that you owe me. My name is Aaron, and I am a 40-year-old office worker. I've been married to my husband, John, for 14 years. My daughter, Natalie, was born at about the same time I got married, so she's already in the 8th grade. The three of us were living happily together as a family, and I knew that we would always be able to build a nice, warm home together. I met John at a blind date, and I was immediately attracted to his friendly, kind, and cheerful personality. He was also attracted to me as well, and we kept in touch all through our high school years. We exchanged contact information at the time, and we started going out after a few dates. A year later, he proposed to me, and we got married. I loved him so much, and I was so happy when he decided to marry me. I had a group of good friends from high school, and the four of us always got together whenever something happened. When I told them that I was getting married, they all congratulated me. I remember that they all attended our wedding and were saying that they wanted to get married too. Then, after my wedding, one by one, my friends got married to their husbands one after another and all the members got married. We laughed and talked about how our group has suddenly become a group of adults because just a group of good friends and classmates had all at once become a group of married women. Then, when I got pregnant, they all started getting pregnant one after the other, and in no time at all, it became a group of mom friends. I felt like we were going through life together, and I knew we would be close, good friends for the rest of our lives. I had a fulfilling time as a wife and a mother in this way, but I think I was also happy being an employee at the company where I work for. After I graduated from college, I was assigned to the planning and development department of a major company where I worked very busily every day. The work required difficult skills, but it was very rewarding, and every day was a learning experience and discovery. One of my friends in the mom's group, who is a full-time housewife, had once said to me, You're really a workaholic, Erin. But you also have a fulfilling private life with your family, and it's like you have two bodies or something. According to my friend, I am a very strong woman. But I really would like to have a body that is as tireless as a strong man. Both John and Natalie support and relaxes me at home after a tiring day at work. I'm home. Oh, mommy, welcome home. When Natalie was still small, she would greet me with a smile and hug me when I came home from work. Just by hugging Natalie, all my tiredness goes away for that day. Welcome home, honey. Dinner is ready. Another person who relaxes me is John. John quit his job after Natalie was born and started working part-time because I wanted to continue working at my company. John began to work part-time at a cafe, and he was the one who picked up and dropped off our daughter. And when I came home from work, he would cook dinner for me. It's pretty difficult to cook with a tired body after a long day at work, and it's a real relief to come home and find a hot meal ready for me to just eat. John's cooking makes my body and soul feel relaxed, and I take a bath with Natalie and talk about the day. 
my life was like that, and my work and private life were very fulfilling. I think I was able to do this because both John and Natalie were understanding of my work. But because such a kind husband and daughter let me be like this, I became even more focused and got more passionate about my work. As I produced positive results at work, I was promoted to a higher position. I started working more overtime and began to come home pretty late at night. This often meant that by the time I got home, Natalie was already asleep in bed. Fortunately, by then, Natalie was in the upper grades of elementary school, so she was a little mature enough to understand the difficulties of my job and was able to do some things on her own. So, John also began working more hours for his shifts at the cafe. Lately, I've been really into checking out different coffee shops and buying their coffee beans. I bought some today too. I also bought some cakes at a new cake shop, so let's have them with the coffee. John seems to be addicted to coffee and making coffee, as he seems to be learning about roasting the coffee beans, making coffee with different types of coffee beans, and putting them into practice at his part time job. That's why he makes very good coffee even at home. In this way, John and Natalie both forgave me for being so passionate about my work, and I didn't realize that our family relationship was slowly starting to fall apart. I first found out about it when Natalie came to me to consult about something. What's wrong? You said you wanted to talk about something. Um, well, actually, the other day, when I went to see a movie with friends from school, I saw dad being with another woman. What? It wasn't like they were holding hands arm in arm or anything like that, but they looked a little intimate with each other. And since last year or so, I often hear dad talking on the phone before you come home from work, mom. And at other times, dad's so focused with his phone that he wouldn't really pay attention to me when I spoke to him and he would look kind of happy while looking at his phone. At first, I thought he was texting you, Mom. I also thought that he was talking to you, Mom, when he was on the phone. But after seeing him, I started to wonder if he was talking to the woman from the other day. Natalie was saying this with a very sad look on her face. She was already in middle school at that time, so she is sensitive to such things and would not be able to handle the shock by herself. And hearing this, I was for sure in shock too. I would be very sad if John, who I thought was putting Natalie first, was actually having an affair behind my back. Oh, I'm so sorry, sweetie. I didn't know we were making you feel that sad. I've been a little work-centered, haven't I? No, I, I think it's cool that you work so hard, Mom. So, don't feel sorry for that. I was very happy that Natalie said such kind and understanding words to me. Thank you, Natalie. And I'll check with your dad about this, okay? And, if your dad is having an affair, I think I'll divorce him, but will that be okay with you, honey? When I asked her that, she nodded her head. I don't like the idea of my own dad having an affair. Just knowing that and being with him would make me feel bad. Seeing my own daughter say this made me reflect on the fact that I had not paid much attention to my family. I must look into this issue thoroughly for the sake of Natalie, who took her courage to talk to me about such a heavy topic. I immediately requested an investigation agency to investigate about John's affair, and I was surprised to find out the results. John was indeed having an affair, just as Natalie had said, and there were photographic evidence of the affair. But what was most surprising was his affair partner. She was Stacy, who was one of my classmates from my high school days and one of the members from the mom's group. I was more shocked by the news than John's actual affair. 
I was betrayed by a really great friend who I had thought we had always been close and trusted each other. Stacy is a stay at home mom, and she was the last in our group to get married. So, her child is still small, like five years old or something. And yet, she was having an affair with John without taking care of her own child. When I got the evidence of their affair, I was really shocked and couldn't move for a while. If I had not been in my room, Natalie would have seen those photos, and this would cause a lot of troubles in my family. I was not ready to show and confront John yet, and I could definitely not show Natalie these photos. I took a deep breath and tried to calm myself down. Then, one of the friends from the mom's group informed me that she had changed her job. So I thought it would be a good opportunity and suggested that we all get together. Stacy would still have no idea that I knew about the whole affair thing, even if I suggested for a get together. So my friends set up an opportunity to get all together, and I was to meet Stacy, my husband's lover, three weeks later. In the meantime, I hired a lawyer in a hurry and prepared for the divorce. I told Natalie about what I had found out briefly and told her that her dad and I were getting a divorce. So, Natalie and I spent our days off together looking at new apartments to live in. And in no time at all, the day would come when I would confront Stacy at the get together. Firstly, I asked my friend who has changed jobs to her new job, and then everyone gave their own updates. Stacy still didn't seem to know that I knew about her secret, and we talked normally. Everyone is working after all, so it's good that things are changing. I'm just a housewife, so I'm just repeating the same routine as usual. Stacy says so about her life. Well, you don't have to work, Stacy, because you have a husband who can provide for you. Another one of my friends says that to her. Well, I do appreciate my husband, but there are times when I feel like I'm a little bored of it. I guess now is the time to talk and confront her about her secret. So that's why you have affairs with other people's husbands, right? Huh? Stacy and my other friends froze at my comment. Hey, uh, Erin, what do you mean by that? Stacy kept silent with her face turning blue, and the other friend asked me the question. Well, it looks like Stacy has an affair with my husband, John. What? No way! You must be j joking! Stacy would never do such a thing! The other friends tried to protect Stacy. Since other friends protected her, Stacy took advantage of it. Th that's right! Erin, what are you saying all of a sudden? You probably must have mistaken me for someone else, don't you think? Well, of course, Stacy would try to say that. Oh, really? Well then, why don't you all check this with your own eyes? With that, I took out the photos of evidence from my bag. My friends are checking out the photos that are laid out on the table. Oh my gosh! Stacy, why? Stacy probably didn't think that I even had the photos as evidence. She can't seem to hide her surprise and covers her open mouth with her hand. I was really in shock, you know. Why did you have an affair with my husband? Stacy finally seemed to think she couldn't escape. I'm really sorry. I happened to walk into that cafe where your husband works, and I told him that I had no idea he worked there, and from then on, I began to go there. My husband does provide for me, but he stopped caring about me so much after we got married. That's why I was beginning to feel lonely. Stacy started to cry when she said that. But even if she has such a reason, having an affair is not good in general, and it's not right to touch a friend's husband. I 
proceeded to talk in a nonchalant manner and not trying to be carried away by Stacy who was crying her eyes out. I'm sorry to everyone else, but I'm going to tell Stacy here that I'm going to charge her alimony. And I also put the content certified mail in your mailbox at your house today, Stacy. So maybe your husband should have already checked it by now, right? Oh no! How could he do such a terrible thing? Terrible thing? It's much more terrible to mess with your friend's husband when you yourself are married and have a child too. You should be punished and pay for your crime properly. When I said this, Stacy turned pale and nodded her head. We can't really trust you two anymore, Stacy. My other friends said so too, and we left the restaurant, leaving Stacy behind. Now that the revenge against Stacy was over, I had to deal with John next. I'm pretty sure that Stacy would have already contacted John about it. So, when I came home, John came to the entrance with a panicked look. Hey, how could you? What? I just received a call from Stacy. Are you talking about your affair? How could you do it so publicly? You're terrible. You acted like a good husband to me, but in reality, you were having an affair behind my back. N no, that's... But, but Stacy has a family too, so why did you expose her to her husband like that? How ridiculous. I guess people who have affairs have a similar way of thinking, huh? You think that as long as the other person doesn't know about it, there's no problem, right? But in reality, you really did something wrong, so everything must be exposed as a part of your punishment. That's why I'm going to divorce you and demand alimony and child support from you. Since there was already evidence of the affair and no way for John to get away with it, he agreed to divorce, but was reluctant to pay for alimony and child support. But when I hired a good lawyer and told him that I was prepared to fight the case all the way to court, he finally agreed to pay. So that's how I divorced my now ex-husband, sold the house we had been living in, and moved into a new apartment with Natalie. I filed for alimony from my ex-husband and Stacy, and received $30,000 from each of them. I also demanded child support from John. After the divorce was finally settled, I started living with Natalie. As one would expect, this incident traumatized me for quite a while, but little by little, my wounds began to heal. However, about six months later, an incident occurred. I was relaxing at home with Natalie on my day off when I suddenly received a phone call from my mother. What she told me has surprised me so much. My ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law suddenly came to my parents' house and forced themselves in without any permission. At that time, my father had gone out to take care of some personal business. So that's why my mother called me in a hurry. I quickly got ready and went to my parents' house. When I arrived at my parents' house, my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law were sitting on the living room sofa waiting for me. I had no clue why they had come. What are you both doing here at my parents' house all of a sudden? I asked, and my ex-husband has said something which shocked me. I want you to give me back the money that you owe me. Huh? I never borrowed any money from you. I paid $15,000 for the wedding, didn't I? You were the leading role in the wedding, so it means that I had lent the money to you for your wedding. Since you divorced me now, it's all a fraud. To be honest, I would sue you for the marriage fraud, but all you have to do is return the $15,000 as a settlement. He had said an impossible request. My ex-mother-in-law also told me to pay him as soon as possible. After the divorce, I knew that my ex-husband gotten a full-time job at the cafe where he worked from before. But, as I recall, 
The pay was quite low for a cafe staff. He must be in trouble with money, which was why he was making such unreasonable demands. Well, let me tell you this we both were the leading roles at the wedding. And even after that, I paid more of your living expenses than you did for our marriage. If you calculate the total, $15,000 is a small fraction of what I paid. So don't harass me by making impossible demands. I tried to get them to leave, but they didn't leave that easily. Then, my father came home. My father had apparently received a call from my mother and had come back in a hurry. What are you guys doing here? My ex husband explained the same thing to my father while being scared to death at my father who was shouting angrily. My father listened silently but seemed to be beyond angry and taken aback by John's impossible demand. It's your fault for having an affair in the first place. If you're going to make such unreasonable demands, get the hell out of here! Saying this, my father tried to kick him out, but my ex husband got down on his knees. Please, Aaron, lend me money! Not only from you, but Stacy's husband is demanding alimony from me, and I really can't pay up anymore. Fifteen thousand dollars? No. $10,000 would even help! He must be insane to be begging for money at a time like this. I coldly told him, No, I can't do that, so go home. But to that, my ex mother in law says, Come on, you are also responsible for what had happened, and insisted that I was obligated to lend the money. The situation was getting out of hand. So, my father said, Okay, I'll get the money, so wait. And went to another room. Hey, Dad, what do you mean? I hurried after him, and my father grinned. Well, I have plenty of money. Since we have it, why don't we give it to them? I was convinced after I saw my father open the closet and take it out. Well, this will be interesting. My father put the bills in an envelope and gave it to John. After finally getting what they wanted, my ex-husband and ex-mother-in-law left with a satisfied looks on their faces. And just as they left, I immediately locked the door and called the police. The two seemed to have checked the envelope after they went outside and immediately came back and started banging on our front door. Hey, what the hell is going on here? This is fake money from Monopoly. I don't want this fake cash. My ex-husband shouted angrily at the door. I laughed and said to him over the front door, Since we have so much money, I thought I'd share it with you, you know. Then, my ex-husband said, You've got to be kidding! And started to bang the front door even harder. It sounded as if they were both kicking the door with their feet. But they didn't seem to think that this would end up becoming a huge problem for them. John and his mother were just kicking the front door when the police arrived and caught them red-handed. All the neighbors gathered around and apparently a lot of people saw John and his mother getting arrested. In the end, John didn't get any money but he had to pay a fine for the arrest and the cost of reimbursement for the damage to our front door. Moreover, it seems that one of the people who saw the arrest was a regular customer at the cafe where John works and word got out to the cafe and he got fired instantly. Now, he's currently unable to find work and has returned to his parents' home where his in-laws are paying alimony and child support on his behalf instead. I have also issued a restraining order against my former in-laws against our family. Now, if anything happens, my family will be able to call the police and the police would come immediately. And now, I am happy as ever with Natalie. I will continue to work hard and watch my own daughter grow up. Thank you for watching until the end. 
please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next video.